If we just look at the records SpaceX has set this year alone, they already overshadow some of NASA's proudest achievements across its 50-year history. From rocket development to orbital payload launches, from company expansion to engineering breakthroughs, SpaceX is rewriting the rules of the game. At this pace, Elon Musk's company could soon replace NASA's role entirely, becoming the main force representing the United States in the race to contain China's growing influence in space. So, what milestones has SpaceX actually reached this year? And how can a private company outperform an entire national agency like NASA? Let's break down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Is there any aerospace company in the world that rose to become number one in just over 20 years since its founding? Like SpaceX? We can safely say, absolutely not. At first glance, you might think SpaceX was built by some oil-rich billionaire or inherited decades of experience from NASA or the Soviet Union. But the truth couldn't be more different. SpaceX was born out of hardship and the sheer determination of one man, Elon Musk. When he first started, Musk didn't even know how rockets worked. He spent months attending aerospace conferences, talking to experts, and learning from engineers. Little by little, he became more knowledgeable than almost anyone else and built his dream team. Their first office? Just an old warehouse in El Segundo. Tables made from crates, engineers sleeping under desks, living off instant noodles. Yet, in those rough conditions, they built their very first rocket, Falcon 1. After three failed launches, Musk was broke. Every dollar he had was gone. He borrowed money for one final attempt, knowing that if it failed, everything would collapse. Then, luck finally smiled on SpaceX. That fourth flight succeeded, opening the door to billion-dollar contracts and setting the stage for Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Dragon, and Starship. With each milestone, the company's footprint grew from California to Texas and now Florida. Even at the top, SpaceX isn't slowing down. In fact, 2025 may be their most milestone-packed year yet. And no rocket illustrates that dominance better than Falcon 9. From the start of this year through November 11th, it has successfully flown 144 missions, already 12 more launches than the total number in 2024. And with nearly two months still left in the year, SpaceX is aiming for 170 to 180 flights, sending 2,300 to 2,500 tons of payload into orbit, accounting for over 90% of the global payload mass when you compare SpaceX to every other launch provider combined. The numbers become even more staggering when compared to NASA's golden era of the Space Shuttle in the 1980s. In 1985, the shuttle's busiest year, there were only nine successful launches, sending about 150 to 180 tons of payload into low Earth orbit, barely 7% of Falcon 9's annual flight count today. But flight numbers are one thing, cost is another. Back then, each shuttle mission, NASA's pride at the time, cost around $1.5 billion just to deliver about 25 tons to LEO. That's roughly $54,500 per kilogram, the price of a program that ultimately burned through over $200 billion, flew at a painfully low frequency, and ended in two heartbreaking disasters, Challenger and Columbia. Falcon 9, on the other hand, thanks to its reusable booster, costs only about $68 million per launch bringing the price down to just $2,700 per kilogram, 20 times cheaper than the shuttle. And that's for commercial missions. When SpaceX uses Falcon 9 for its own Starlink launches, the actual cost drops even lower. Now, imagine if the space shuttle had to fly as often as Falcon 9. The cost would have been astronomical. And here's the kicker. Falcon 9's success rate is nearly flawless. Its booster B-1067 has already flown 31 times, breaking the previous record held by B-1061 with 23 flights. Put that next to any expendable rocket, where every launch ends with the booster being destroyed, and it's clear just how far ahead SpaceX really is. But it doesn't stop there. Even after Starship comes online to handle heavy satellite missions, Falcon 9 will still play a crucial role, it's currently the only rocket certified to carry Crew Dragon to the International Space Station. But there's more, like Dragon. This spacecraft helped NASA break free from its old dependence on Russia. In September, during the CRS-33 mission, 
Cargo Dragon successfully performed the first-ever orbital reboost of the ISS, raising its altitude by a few miles using its own propellant system and two Draco thrusters on the trunk section. That's a job previously handled only by Russia's Progress spacecraft. By achieving this milestone, SpaceX not only proved its capability, but also reduced international reliance, a crucial step especially now that Russia plans to leave the ISS and team up with China's Tiangong station instead. And that's not all. Back in March, Dragon once again proved its reliability when it had to bring home two astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, after Boeing's Starliner ran into problems. What was supposed to be a short trip turned into a 287-day stay aboard the ISS, 28 times longer than planned. SpaceX stepped in, and Dragon safely brought them back to Earth. Rescue mission might sound dramatic, but honestly, it was just another day's work for Dragon, and it only strengthened Elon Musk's reputation for building a spacecraft NASA can truly rely on. And even after the ISS retires, Dragon's story isn't over. It'll keep flying to upcoming private space stations like Vast's Haven 1. And who knows, maybe one day it'll even ferry astronauts to future Starship-based habitats. Over on the other side of the field, Boeing's Starliner is still struggling to get back on track. As of June 2025, the company has managed to restore four out of five failed thrusters in orbit. But the root cause still isn't fully understood. Engineers suspect overheating may have damaged seals or helium lines, and confirming that will require extensive ground tests through the end of 2025. Now, let's talk about Falcon Heavy. 2025 marks a major transition year for SpaceX's Super Heavy reusable rocket. While it hasn't flown a single mission this year, some key strategic updates have quietly reinforced its importance in the aerospace industry. Instead of focusing on launches, SpaceX has spent the year laying the groundwork for large-scale expansion, especially in its launch infrastructure. In early October, the U.S. Space Force approved SpaceX's plan to double the number of launches from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California from about 50 to 100 per year starting in 2026. This includes activating Launch Complex 6, once home to the Delta Y-4's Heavy, as the third dedicated site for Falcon Heavy. From there, up to five missions per year can be launched, complementing its existing pads at Florida's LC-39A and SLC-37B at Cape Canaveral. This expansion will not only help SpaceX spread out its launch load and ease congestion at Florida's busy pads, but also meet the growing demand from NASA and the U.S. military for heavy lift missions. And finally, the biggest breakthrough of SpaceX in 2025 has been Starship. This year's unprecedented expansion at SpaceX is largely thanks to Elon Musk pouring everything into this vehicle. Between January and October, the company conducted five test flights, a dramatic leap compared to previous years, and among them, two stood out, IFT-10 and IFT-11. Both were resounding successes. The Super Heavy booster proved it could operate reliably even in fully reusable configuration, landing gently in the ocean. While the Starship upper stage deployed Starlink Vive 3 simulators and gathered invaluable data on heat shield performance and orbital maneuvers, achieving safe re-entry. These accomplishments didn't just cement Starship as the world's first fully reusable launch system, they marked a turning point for SpaceX, pushing the company to rapidly move toward Starship V3, bigger, stronger, and powered by the all-new Raptor 3 engines. And the upgrades didn't stop with the vehicle itself. Launch Pad 2 at Starbase was completed, with a new flame trench designed to support a higher launch cadence. The Massey Site Engine Test Facility was expanded to handle the new Starship fleet, and Florida's LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center was upgraded with a deflector system and water-cooled sound suppression, preparing for the first Starship launch from the East Coast in 2026. Meanwhile, two new Starship pads are rising at SLC-37, and two massive gigabays are under construction at Roberts Road, Florida, and Starbase, over 11 times the size of the Texas Megabay, demonstrating that Starship's potential development could surpass anything we currently imagine. As Musk himself promised, so many spaceships will be born in the Starbase Gigabay. These achievements not only showcase SpaceX's hive-like efficiency, but also pave the way for hundreds of launches per year, 
supporting Artemis missions and setting the stage for Mars exploration. From a swamp to its own thriving city in just eight years, Starbase stands as a testament to SpaceX's vision. And with this momentum, there's no doubt the company will achieve its ambitious goals in the near future. And all these achievements only reinforce one thing. SpaceX is steadily taking a leading role in areas NASA once dominated. The company isn't just expanding at breakneck speed, it's reshaping the U.S. space landscape, turning NASA from a dominant authority into a partner increasingly dependent on private innovation. In 2025 alone, with over 6,000 Starlink satellites in orbit, SpaceX is projected to generate $15.5 billion in commercial revenue, surpassing NASA's entire annual budget. On top of that, the company holds around $22 billion in U.S. government contracts, with NASA and the Department of Defense as major clients, effectively making the National Space Agency a tenant on Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Dragon, and soon Starship flights. Starship HLS for Artemis missions is a prime example of this growing reliance. This influence extends beyond rockets. Former SpaceX engineers like Anna Menon, now NASA astronaut candidates, bring Crew Dragon experience to the agency. Others from Hawthorne have migrated to Houston, helping NASA adopt reusable rocket technologies it once ignored. Even with veteran leaders like Kathy Luters and William Gerstenmeier moving from NASA to SpaceX, the flow of innovation is reversing. SpaceX's culture is seeping into NASA's DNA, teaching the agency to learn from its private child to survive. Looking ahead, as Starship drives costs down to two to three million dollars per launch and revenue skyrockets toward 2030, NASA could become a minor player within SpaceX's ecosystem, similar to how tech giants absorb startups. Amid the U.S.-China space race, SpaceX emerges as America's key shield, ready to lead the country to the moon before 2028 and lay the groundwork for Mars. The reality is clear. SpaceX isn't just outpacing NASA, it's redefining the power dynamics of U.S. space exploration, becoming the force that will carry the nation into the future.